There's something super cool happening tomorrow, and we've been telling you about it for quite a while. Yeah, this is the annual eclipse tomorrow, October 14th. The Ring of Fire will go over West Texas and Albuquerque, New Mexico. That's actually Albuquerque, New Mexico. Why do I know that get place? The best place, the best place to see the best place on eclipse. Earth because Yanez is there. There he is on a four second delay through outer space and back. <laughs> Yes. Fiesta, which we talk about every year, and we always bring up the fact that you're from Albuquerque and, and growing up, you know, this is a, a typical site. Anyone who's from New Mexico knows this is a gigantic deal. And one of the fun things they do is in the evenings, they, they're able to put the balloons up and they get them lit up, and it's just such a different experience. But, Yanez, we're going to essentially have uh, nighttime during the day for you specifically with the way this eclipse is lining up to Albuquerque. be even better if it was a total solar eclipse because see you go up in one of these balloons uh -huh. <laughs> sure <laughs> So, uh, Sophia, it's funny you mentioned that because we've talked about this before. I went up one time years ago um, in a balloon, and it was it was like this, where it was just calm, just gentle. So Picture. she had the perfect experience. Picture, and this is something that a lot of people don't understand about these balloons is because they're in some respects so fragile. I mean, you could have a weather system miles and miles away, and a gust of wind comes out of nowhere, and all of a sudden you're getting pushed in a different direction. My uh, balloon experience was in North Texas a, a while back and at one point we lost altitude to the point where the gondola hit the tops of the trees and we were like oh my goodness and then and then almost into the field and my man the pilot uh, lifted us up at the last second. It was wild but Yanez right I mean that's one of those things wind could be nowhere in well not that you can see it but nowhere close by and it'll still impact these balloons. Yeah, because you think about how they do a forecast. Your forecast is for this spot. For the pilots, too, oh, as well yeah. as the weather guys. All right, Anthony. Thank Have you so much. Have the time of your life. Enjoy, my friend. Have so much fun. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Yep. Biggest fears in 100 days in a row. I know. I don't know if I could, but that is exactly what author and fear facer Michelle Poehler did, and she wrote all about it in her new book, Hello Fears, and she's here with us now in studio to talk about it. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. A little bit about this. We want to share with our audience at home. Where did this all come from, this idea to put all these fears into it and how to attack them? Well, so I was, a it changed my life. And what I realized is that you can either pursue comfort by checking society's boxes or you can pursue. Right, right. When you, when you're so terrified of something and you attack it or you face it, and then not only do you get over, there's this saying that like everything you want in life is on the other side of fear. Do you live by that now? A hundred percent. I realize. If we're going to start facing our fears, is there an area of life that you suggest we begin with? Some, I mean, you, do you want to take on maybe your toughest fear first or the easier one first? How do you even begin? You begin by asking that every time that you feel, you know, doubtful of who you are. I mean, what's the fourth step? Face the fear. Face the fear. Get out there and face it. Just do it. Just do it. Yes. Oh, thank you so much, Michelle, for joining us. It's Can't a great place to, to start, though. Yeah, book. we yeah. really appreciate it. Where can people get the book and uh, get more information? Anywhere books are sold. Go to Amazon, Burns and Noble. And Michelle, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Going out back today at 36. He's a professional cowboy and a rancher living in Texas. Yeah, Anthony Thomas has a unique story that most recently landed him on a cattle ranch in West Houston. He's joining us this morning. Anthony Thomas, thank you for joining us. Yeah. What a unique story. So you, okay, you are were born in Malaysia and then lived in Australia. Tell yeah. us about your time in Australia before you came here to rodeo. Yeah, so I'm your experience in rodeo, because you just said you've had a lot of injuries to. <laughs> yeah, well, bareback riding in my sport's uh, very uh, aggressive. Honestly, um, God put a uh, an idea in my heart. Uh, business, tell us about how the beef that comes from your ranch is different from anything that you may find in a grocery store. Yeah, so it's way different. You know, being a pro athlete, my whole adult can't put a price on knowing exactly where your food comes from. 
um, eggs. Family owned sure. butcher. And when you work with families, they're not just calling and saying, Anthony, I need a steak. Right. I mean, you're really like, you're like a consultant about yeah, what so the family really needs. I want to meet this guy. I want to see what this is all about. How yeah. can they get in contact with you, get an order in? Yeah, so luckily this is a small business. so. Um, and the delivery guy, the rancher, the market. All right, because more than just the beef, there's catering too, yes. there's all of it. Uh, Anthony, thanks for coming in and sharing your story with us and hanging out with us today. Yeah, no problem. It was a pleasure. Really appreciate it.